This is a lecture for my administrative law class. We're talking about agency adjudication, and here we're going to be talking about the public rights doctrine, or sometimes we'll talk about public rights versus private rights. So let's take a look at our slides. Okay. Again, we're talking, this is our unit on administrative agency adjudication. So we're typically going to be talking about a hearing that occurs before an administrative law judge and or some sort of hearing officer. And we're dealing with what kinds of cases they can sort out or what types of issues they can address in your administrative hearing. We're talking about public rights and private rights. So by way of background, Article three of the constitution appears to vest judicial authority in the courts. And we, so sometimes we call these article three courts and some constitutional scholars, as you might expect, have argued that it violates this provision for executive agencies to adjudicate cases or to have non article three courts. Now, one of the biggest areas of non article three courts, of course, is our bankruptcy court system or bankruptcy judges, um, which aren't exactly an administrative agency, but they are created by Congress. Um, some of our other types of uh, special claims courts or magistrates might be article two judges instead of article three judges and um, that work for so those are, um, again, not article three courts necessarily, but they work their article two judges within um, article serving Article Three courts. Over time, the Supreme Court has permitted more adjudication by and within agencies, um, as we're going to be talking about in the coming lectures. And originally, such approval was limited to three types of cases, public rights, territorial courts, and military courts. So if you think about military courts, these are specialized tribunals we're not going to have them hearing cases with civilians or deciding disputes between civilians typically. And that um, very, for, uh, traditionally we're always allowed, even though the military tribunals might not be Article III judicial branch um, courts. So traditionally public rights are claims against the government. When we talk about public rights, we mean claims against the government or maybe by the government against an individual, let's say that you've been overpaid in your social security benefits and they want to recoup those. Territorial claims and military cases. Now, private rights are legal disputes, as you might expect, between private parties. So these are our traditional common law areas of torts, like personal injury claims, property damage, contracts, or um, land ownership disputes or property claims. So if you think about, there's a reason we have you study these courses in your first year of law school, torts, contracts, and property are, are the main subdivisions of common law legal disputes. And at the time the constitution was ratified, uh, drafted and ratified, that's what they envisioned the judiciary to cover was common law areas of torts, contracts and property claims, and then probably some criminal cases um, as well. And so those are our common law areas. So historically, agencies could always adjudicate public rights cases under their statutory jurisdiction. And so, for example, if you wanted to dispute whether your permit should be revoked or um, a license was denied and you wanted to appeal that, well, that's a, a, a type of public right, not a private dispute with your next door neighbor or um, a vendor for a company or something like that, um, a, a contract claim or somebody that you had a traffic fender bender with or something like that. And so, um, or you are asserting that you should be getting veterans benefits or uh, you're an immigrant trying to fend off a deportation. Um, and so these are types of, in, in other words, you want a visa so that you can be allowed to, to remain in the country. And these are public rights. These are things that the government has and gives and takes away. And agencies have always, for our country's whole history, been able to hear those types of cases. But in modern times, in the 20th century, they started to hear ancillary claims that are related to these public rights cases. 
And now, so most public rights cases are, uh, most public rights are created by statute. And in the 20th century, Congress started saying, in addition to having this agency or commission that's going to have tribunals that hears cases about this type of claim against a government agency or for this type of benefit or for this license or permit or something like that, if there's some sort of related legal dispute, the same tribunal could just hear that related claim, even though it's more like a common law claim. And that's why we started to have problems. And so the, the kind of breakthrough case in this area, and it's, it's a note case or mentioned in the chapter introduction in my case book and a lot of other administrative law case books, it's a main case is Crowell v. Benson from 1932. So here we are early in the New Deal era um, to give it some context. And this is the first case where the Supreme Court, the US Supreme Court approved adjudication of private rights by an agency. And this case involved a workers comp type claim by longshoremen, so these are dock workers, um, against an employer. And this had been assigned by statute to um, the US Employees Compensation Commission. And so if, um, just to think about this for a moment, why did we have to create a, st a special federal statute um, for dock workers and longshoremen? Well, think about a big port, one of our major ports in the US where we're going to have um, uh, uh, ships coming from other, uh, other countries and we, we have questions about admiralty um, law. You're going to have people getting off the ship, the crew, um, and maybe helping unload cargo and stuff like that. I hope you can see that um, this is dangerous work. Unloading cargo ships, cargo off of ships, you're moving heavy objects and accidents happen and people are injured and sometimes killed. But then you have a lot of uncertainty about who's under jurisdiction and what if this is on a dock that goes way out into the water and, um, and what if some of these um, workers were citizens but were working side by side with sailors or crew members or merchant marines from another country and so forth. So Congress intervened and solved this problem, sort of spelled out what you should do and created a commission that would hear these cases because they're a little too confusing for the common law courts. And that was the deal with Crowell v. Benson. Um, it was one of these early uh, longshoremen cases that was sort of a precursor in some ways to our workers, our modern workers compensation boards. But it's, it, it makes sense that this was one of the first areas where we had to do it because dock work, um, unloading cargo ships is so dangerous. And um, legally, there's, it can be very confusing about jurisdictional questions and whose law applies and so forth. So the Supreme Court in this case relied heavily on the availability of judicial review to uphold the statute. So the, the question was, look, I was injured, um, a dock worker was injured and brought a claim and didn't like the result and said, this whole statute is unconstitutional. I should have just been able to file a tort claim in a regular Article Three court. And so that was the challenge. And that's still in the background of our modern cases um, in this area is this type of idea of someone is used typically dissatisfied with the result they get at their agency hearing. And they're saying, I should have been able to just start in a, uh, with a common law claim in an Article Three court from the outset. Well, the Supreme Court partly says it doesn't matter because you're always going to get, get to appeal your unfavorable decision or adverse decision from an agency into a regular Article Three court. And they are going to have de novo review. They get to review, it, like substitute their own judgment. They don't have to defer to the finding of the commission, in this case, the US Employees Compensation Commission, um, for uh, questions of law and questions of jurisdictional fact. And so for questions of law, don't worry, we're not gonna have bureaucrats making the decisions. Uh, initially, they might make a first pass, but you can still go into your Article Three court, your traditional common law court, and have them tell you what they would decide what they want to do, what they would have done. But, but, 
the court does allow for deference to the fact finding, which is sort of similar to what our modern appellate courts do with um, deferring to the jury's finding of facts, maybe. Um, that's in, uh, not a complete and analog perfect analogy, but you can see um, uh, uh, something comparable there. Okay, let's move on. Um, so executive agencies and officials in modern times have been authorized, usually by statute, to adjudicate public rights disputes through, and this has gone on throughout our country's history. So even the, the very first Congress, uh, the one that uh, was at the time of the, of the Constitution's drafting, um, assigned some adjudicative powers to executive officers. So it's, it was a known thing and was permitted by the founding fathers or the framers of the Constitution to have executive branch officials doing some hearings and adjudications and so forth. And so courts readily today accept agency adjudication of public rights, but there's a little more suspicion uh, when you have them then venturing into something that looks like a contract claim or a tort claim or a property claim. And so hence we get our public rights and private rights um, doctrine. So agencies may adjudicate private rights only in cases that are ancillary to a public rights case, like a counterclaim in an agency action. And um, where there is judicial review, including de novo review of the questions of law and questions of jurisdictional fact. What do I mean by a jurisdictional fact? Uh, uh, the questions about like whose law applies, does this person um, who is working for a government contractor count as a government employee, for example? So does it come under the statute? When we're talking about those types of facts that create or negate jurisdiction um, or move it under the purview of a certain type of law, that could be a jurisdictional fact. That's a little different than the who, what, where, when, how type factual questions. Private rights claims adjudicated by agencies must also leave enforcement to the regular courts and not tread on any other traditional court functions like criminal law or holding jury trials. So we're never gonna have an administrative agency that holds a jury trial or impanels a jury for your hearing, nor can they put you in jail. So we don't have to worry about the federal bureaucracy putting you in jail. And in fact, they can have a hearing, they can rule against you, but then if they want to enforce it, for example, they want to eject you from the property or force someone to pay up, execute judgment on a, a bank account or something like that, they're typically then going to have to go to the Department of Justice and they are going to um, have to file an action in a regular Article III court to enforce the um, agency's decision and so forth. So we have a, like another layer of protection or review there. Okay, so we're gonna, that's enough for now. With this video, let's do a quick review question to make sure you understand. Which of the following best describes the difference between public rights and private rights for purposes of administrative law? A, the difference is purely semantic. There's not really a difference. The terms are often used interchangeably by courts, although federal agencies prefer the term public. B, public rights are the rights of the general public to have government act in the public interest, while private rights focus on the individual right to privacy, as in abortion rights cases. Or C, public rights are generally a claim against the government, while private rights are common law legal disputes between private parties. This is supposed to be an easy question. Hopefully you know the answer. And if you don't, um, you really should rewatch the video um, so that you can understand this area before we move on and talk about some of the um, important cases. Okay, that concludes our introductory lecture about the public rights doctrine.